We've got some dumb challenges today. All right, let's begin. All right, first challenge complete. One, two, three, four, five sides in eight seconds. Just kidding guys, if you solve five, you solve six. Well, let's look at the rest of the challenges here. Um, I've also solved four sides and three and two and one. You know what? I've actually completed every challenge here already. All right, that's it. See you guys next time. Okay, I'm back. I've been told that YouTube barely pays anything for a one minute video. So why am I doing these challenges today? The point of all of these challenges is they are supposed to be easier than solving the whole cube. But even though they are easier than solving the whole cube, will I be able to do these faster? Well, let's go on to the next challenge and we'll see. So this challenge is solve four sides. I am not allowed to just solve the whole cube again. I have to just try and solve four sides. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is difficult. Uh... Let's count it. One, two, three, four sides, and green and blue are not solved. This took me 12 seconds. That is a lot worse than eight seconds. You know what? Maybe four sides was too restrictive. It's barely different from solving the whole cube. Let's try just solving three sides. Okay, why does this feel like it's gonna be more difficult? <laughs> mm. Okay, I messed up. And how 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 do we how do we do this? One, two, three. That was so much harder. I had to do less than solve four sides. I almost accidentally just solved four sides and it took me almost twice as long. All right, you might be wondering why I'm doing this. A lot of you guys who are trying to get faster at cubing have asked me why you still average 20 or 30 seconds even after learning all these algorithms, finger tricks, and advanced techniques. Meanwhile, the fastest cubers in the world who know similar algorithms to you can average five seconds. I think people often underestimate the power of practice. And obviously practice makes you better. You know, maybe practice is the difference between someone who averages 10 seconds versus 15 seconds. Just kidding. Practice can be the difference between someone who averages 10 seconds and 40 seconds. That's how important practice is. Now, I'd love to be able to just still have my algorithm and finger tricks knowledge, but not have any practice and be able to show you what that looks like, but I can't just unpractice things. So instead I can do challenges that use the same skills as what I use for three by three solving, but I have no practice in any of these, except a few of them. All right, I think I'm gonna try and solve the white and yellow side. If I do two opposite sides, then I can use my OLL algorithms. All right, let's go. Oh no, edge flip and there we go. Hey, that was faster than eight seconds for the whole cube and I solved two sides. But I'm gonna show you mathematically that this time is trash. Just looking at the times here isn't great because every challenge has a different difficulty. Instead, we can see how good I am at each challenge by looking at how many pieces I can solve per second. So here is how many pieces I actually need to solve for each challenge. And it's a rough estimate based on like orientation and permutation being each half a piece and solving a full piece as one piece. You don't have to worry about the details, but basically this is the difficulty of the challenge. And if we divide pieces by time, then we we can see how fast I am solving pieces for each challenge. In a full solve, I can do about 2.4 pieces per second, and this is after years of practice. With no practice, but still being relatively capable, I am going at about half the speed, at 1.3 pieces per second for solving four or two sides. Now what's interesting is solving three sides, I had to figure things out as I went. That makes me way slower at 0.5 pieces solved per second. All right, let's start. Did I even do it? There we go. <laughs> oh, hey, it ended in a J perm. All right, 2.59 seconds, which works out to 1.5 pieces solved per second. 
I figured this would be easy because I don't need to practice, I can just plan the whole thing in inspection, but I guess I wasn't efficient enough with my moves and that's why it took longer. Now let's try doing one layer, which I am not amazing at, but at least I had to do it for the beginner method, so it is something that I am somewhat familiar with. All right, that wasn't too bad. I had some pauses and also just didn't plan out the whole thing, but it was pretty good. And would you look at that? 2.4 pieces per second, the same as what I've practiced for years. Now the difference is I can plan more of this as an inspection, so it should actually be faster, but I messed up, so it evened out in the end. Let's try solving edges only. This is gonna be interesting. I've done this a few times in the past and it's always been worse than my normal three by three solves. So let's see how I do here. Let's do this. Oh, okay. I'm immediately confused. Uh... So there's all of the edge pieces, and interesting, it took me the same time as solving the whole cube. And mathematically, that means solving all eight corner pieces takes me zero seconds. Now it's gonna be corners only, but this is gonna be much easier because it's the same thing as two by two. The problem is I haven't practiced two by two, so I'm gonna be doing some wacky stuff. Uh, okay. I think that was not bad. There were definitely some pauses because I haven't practiced two by two and because you have to get the corners to align with the centers at the end and I didn't realize that. All right, I've been dreading doing this one since the start. This is gonna be permutation only. And what that means is every piece has to go to its correct location. For example, like this, white and blue edge between white and blue, it doesn't have to be turned the right way. It can just be like that. Theoretically, this should be so much faster because you get so much more freedom. I'm thinking of how to solve the cross and all I can think about is getting the white pieces correct, which is not how this is gonna work. Oh yeah, like green and red, this is already solved. That corner is solved too. Oh my God, I can actually make an X cross like that. That is a block. Okay, anyway, uh, I need to solve blue and orange as well. Oh my, oh my, I can do a double X cross. Okay, uh... And I'm, I can skip OLL, these, um, beginner method, basically. What? Oh. Oh, that twisted my brain so hard. Did I even do it right? Is every piece in the correct location? I, I, I think so. Yeah, everything looks right. Man, I made a double X cross. I got an OLL skip because you always skip OLL when you do this. And it still took me 13 seconds. All right, this is like really unsatisfying to look at. I gotta get rid of it. All right, this one might seem like it came out of nowhere. I'm doing the first step of the columns first method, which you have probably never even heard about. But I think this is such an interesting challenge because it involves pieces from all three layers and it is very similar to the Rue method, which I am good at, but we'll see if my practice from Rue translates to this. All right, so I got my first pair right here. I can just pair them up like that. And then my second pair can be made right here. So uh, I think that's a good start. Let's, let's uh, begin. Okay. Uh, where are my pieces? Um, okay, last layer. Jeez, this is only the first step of columns first and it took me 10 seconds. So here are my final stats from each of the 10 challenges. My best ones were solving a three by three normally and solving one layer. And who could have guessed, these two are the only ones I've actually practiced before. Okay, corners only is just two by two. I have practiced that before, but I'm out of practice on it now. And that is why you're gonna see a lower number there, but still higher than everything else. At all the other challenges, even though it is still 3x3 and I'm using a lot of the same skills that I normally use, I'm only going at about half the normal pace I usually do. But solving three sides or solving permutation only were especially slow. For solving three sides, I really had to think about what my next step was. And for solving permutation, I don't have any practice in recognizing pieces the way that I had to do for that challenge. So what's more important, knowledge or practice? Of course, if you want to 
be the best that you can be, you are going to need both. Now with knowledge, it can be simpler. Either you know the algorithm or you don't. Either you do the correct finger tricks or you don't. I'm sure everyone is a pretty good judge of that. But if you want to be the best you can be, then your solves need to be smooth and seamless. And that can only come with practice. Probably more than you think you need. Speaking of lots of practice, let's look at bonus challenge number one. I'd like to say I haven't done this in a while, but I did this pretty recently when I went to teach Michelle Carre how to solve a cube in under a minute. She didn't believe the beginner method could even do that, so I had to show her what I could do with the beginner method, which goes to show you what tons of practice but very little knowledge can get you. All right, let's begin. Okay, second layer now. Uh, third layer. I hate that step. Okay, and then... Not the greatest, had some hesitations, but 19.47 seconds. I solved one piece per second. So there you go. All practice and no knowledge versus all knowledge and no practice. Or ideally, having both. All right, let's see what we got for bonus challenge number two. Yep, this is a different color scheme. Now, doing this solve doesn't really prove much in terms of what the point is of this video, but I just thought it would be fun. All right, this is gonna be an ugly cross. All right, first pair. Um, man, I can't even find pieces, let alone recognize where they go. Okay, there we go. Last layer. Um, nope, wrong PLL. Wrong PLL again. You know what? That last challenge was just too hard and not fair. I have never and will never solve a cube with a different color scheme. 